In projective geometry, Pascal's theorem, also known as the hexagramma mysticum theorem, states that if six arbitrary points are chosen on a conic, which may be an ellipse, parabola, or hyperbola in an appropriate affine plane, and joined by line segments in any order to form a hexagon, then the three pairs of opposite sides of the hexagon, extended if necessary, meet at three points which lie on a straight line, called the Pascal line of the hexagon. The theorem is also valid in the Euclidean plane, but the statement needs to be adjusted to deal with the special cases when opposite sides are parallel. Euclidean variants The most natural setting for Pascal's theorem is in a projective plane since any two lines meet and no exceptions need to be made for parallel lines. However, the theorem remains valid in the Euclidean plane, with the correct interpretation of what happens when some opposite sides of the hexagon are parallel. If exactly one pair of opposite sides of the hexagon are parallel, then the conclusion of the theorem is that the Pascal line determined by the two points of intersection is parallel to the parallel sides of the hexagon. If two pairs of opposite sides are parallel, then all three pairs of opposite sides form pairs of parallel lines and there is no Pascal line in the Euclidean plane in this case, the line at infinity of the extended Euclidean plane is the Pascal line of the hexagon. <laughs> <laughs> Related results This theorem is a generalization of Pappus's hexagon theorem. Pappus's theorem is the special case of a degenerate conic of two lines. Pascal's theorem is the polar reciprocal and projective dual of Brianchon's theorem. It was formulated by Blaise Pascal in a note written in 1639 when he was 16 years old and published the following year as a broadside titled, Essay POVR les coniques, par BP. Pascal's theorem is a special case of the cayley baccarat theorem. A degenerate case of Pascal's theorem four points is interesting, given points A, B, C, D on a conic gamma, the intersection of alternate sides, A, B, C, D, B, C, D, A, together with the intersection of tangents at opposite vertices A, C, and B, D are collinear in four points, the tangents being degenerate sides, taken at two possible positions on the hexagon and the corresponding Pascal line sharing either degenerate intersection. This can be proven independently using a property of pole polar. If the conic is a circle, then another degenerate case says that for a triangle, the three points that appear as the intersection of a side line with the corresponding side line of the Gurgun triangle, are collinear. Six is the minimum number of points on a conic about which special statements can be made, as five points determine a conic. The converse is the Breckenridge Maclaurin theorem, named for 18th century British mathematicians William Breckenridge and Colin Maclaurin, Mills 1984, which states that if the three intersection points of the three pairs of lines through opposite sides of a hexagon lie on a line, then the six vertices of the hexagon lie on a conic, the conic may be degenerate, as in Pappus's theorem. The Breckenridge Maclaurin theorem may be applied in the Breckenridge Maclaurin construction, which is a synthetic construction of the conic defined by five points, by varying the sixth point. The theorem was generalized by August Ferdinand Mobius in 1847, as follows Suppose a polygon with four n plus two sides is inscribed in a conic section, and opposite pairs of sides are extended until they meet in two n plus one points. Then if two n of those points lie on a common line, the last point will be on that line, too. <laughs> Hexagramma mysticum If six unordered points are given on a conic section, they can be connected into a hexagon in 60 different ways, resulting in 60 different instances of Pascal's theorem and 60 different Pascal lines. This configuration of 60 lines is called the hexagramma mysticum, as Thomas Kirkman proved in 1849. These 60 lines can be associated with 60 points in such a way that each point is on three lines and each line contains three points. The 60 points formed in this way are now known as the Kirkman points. The Pascal lines also pass, three at a time, through 20 Steiner points. There are 20 Cayley lines which consist of a Steiner point and three Kirkman points. The Steiner points also lie, four at a time, on 15 Plucker lines. Furthermore, the 20 Cayley lines pass four at a time through 15 points known as the Salmon points.
Topic: Proofs. Pascal's original note has no proof, but there are various modern proofs of the theorem. It is sufficient to prove the theorem when the conic is a circle, because any non-degenerate conic can be reduced to a circle by a projective transformation. This was realized by Pascal, whose first lemma states the theorem for a circle. His second lemma states that what is true in one plane remains true upon projection to another plane. Degenerate conics follow by continuity the theorem is true for non-degenerate conics, and thus holds in the limit of degenerate conic. A short elementary proof of Pascal's theorem in the case of a circle was found by Van Iseren 1993, based on the proof in Guggenheimer 1967. This proof proves the theorem for circle and then generalizes it to conics. A short elementary computational proof in the case of the real projective plane was found by Stefanovic 2010. We can infer the proof from existence of isogonal conjugate too. If we are to show that x topic a b da y b c e f z topic C D F A are collinear for conconical A B C D E F. Then notice that A D and C Y F are similar, and that X and Z will correspond to the isogonal conjugate if we overlap the similar triangles. This means that D Y X C Y Z, hence making X Y Z collinear. A short proof can be constructed using cross ratio preservation. Projecting tetrad ABCE from D onto line AB, we obtain tetrad ABPX, and projecting tetrad ABCE from F onto line BC, we obtain tetrad QBCY. This therefore means that R AB, PX equals R QB, psi, where one of the points in the two tetrads overlap, hence meaning that other lines connecting the other three pairs must coincide to preserve cross ratio. Therefore, XYZ are collinear. Another proof for Pascal's theorem for a circle uses Menelaus' theorem repeatedly. Dandelin, the geometer who discovered the celebrated Dandelin spheres, came up with a beautiful proof using 3D lifting technique that is analogous to the 3D proof of Desergue's theorem. The proof makes use of the property that for every conic section we can find a one-sheet hyperboloid which passes through the conic. There also exists a simple proof for Pascal's theorem for a circle using the law of signs and similarity. Topic: <laughs> Proof using cubic curves. Pascal's theorem has a short proof using the Cayley-Baccarat theorem that given any 8 points in general position, there is a unique ninth point such that all cubics through the first 8 also pass through the ninth point. In particular, if two general cubics intersect in eight points then any other cubic through the same eight points meets the ninth point of intersection of the first two cubics. Pascal's theorem follows by taking the eight points as the six points on the hexagon and two of the points say, M and N in the figure on the would-be Pascal line, and the ninth point as the third point P in the figure. The first two cubics are two sets of three lines through the six points on the hexagon for instance, the set AB, CD, EF, and the set BC, DE, FA, and the third cubic is the union of the conic and the line MN. Here the ninth intersection P cannot lie on the conic by genericity, and hence it lies on MN. The cayley baccarat theorem is also used to prove that the group operation on cubic elliptic curves is associative. The same group operation can be applied on a cone if we choose a point E on the cone and a line MP in the plane. The sum of A and B is obtained by first finding the intersection point of line AB with MP, which is M next A and B add up to the second intersection point of the cone with line M, which is D. Thus if Q is the second intersection point of the cone with line N, then A plus B plus C equals D plus C equals Q equals a plus F equals a plus B plus C 
Display style a plus b plus c equals d plus c equals q equals a plus f equals a plus b plus c. Thus, the group operation is associative. On the other hand, Pascal's theorem follows from the above associativity formula, and thus from the associativity of the group operation of elliptic curves by way of continuity. Topic: <laughs> Proof using Bezout's theorem. Suppose f is the cubic polynomial vanishing on the three lines through a b, c, d, e, f, and g is the cubic vanishing on the other three lines b, c, d, f, a. Pick a generic point p on the conic and choose lambda so that the cubic h. Topic f plus lambda g vanishes on p then h. Zero is a cubic that has seven points a, b, c, d, e, f, p in common with the conic. But by Bezout's theorem a cubic and a conic have at most three times two. Equals six points in common, unless they have a common component. So the cubic h equals zero has a component in common with the conic which must be the conic itself, so h equals zero is the union of the conic in a line. It is now easy to check that this line is the Pascal line equals topic a property of pascal's hexagon equals again given the hexagon on a conic of pascal's theorem with the above notation for points in the first figure we have g b g a times h a H F times K F K E times G E G D times H D H C times K C K B equals 1 display style frac overline gb overline got times frac overline ha overline hf times frac overline kf overline k times frac overline ge overline gd times frac overline hd overline hc times frac overline kc overline kb equals 1 Degenerations of Pascal's theorem There exist five-point, four-point and three-point degenerate cases of Pascal's theorem. In a degenerate case, two previously connected points of the figure will formally coincide and the connecting line becomes the tangent at the coalesced point. See the degenerate cases given in the added scheme and the external link on circle geometries. If one chooses suitable lines of the Pascal figures as lines at infinity one gets many interesting figures on parabolas and hyperbolas. See also Desserge's theorem Brianchon's theorem Unicursal hexagram Notes <laughs>